Okay, so uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, everything is now being recorded. So if you have a comment, please, you can always uh, throw it into the chat. I can always peep there. All right. So uh, I think that's uh, basically it. Uh, it's quite wide and it's uh, really too much content. You can see this goes up to around 240 pages. The beauty with the uh, Zoom and online lectures is uh, you have the materials, I have the materials. We quickly rush through some of these and uh, we get things sorted uh, uh, a little bit faster, given that uh, you have the materials and uh, you can uh, quickly interact with your materials. Though I must encourage you that if possible, you get hard copies of these materials so that as we go along, for some of those key things we may mention, you can uh, incorporate them into the hard copy of the material that uh, you will be having at uh, your desktop or rather your office, wherever you are seated, whether you're in the library or whatever conducive environment you've chosen. Okay, so this is the introductory part. We will have uh, a couple of tests since everything is on where we can do as much as six tests uh, so the choice is uh, in your uh, availability and uh, having uh, you don't even need data because with where everything is free apparently okay so if there are questions concerning this, if there is anything you need in terms of clarity concerning the content we are supposed to look at, feel free to ask. If there is nothing, I share the first topic and we start off. So I'll give probably two minutes. If you have a question, you can unmute and you ask your question. Or you can just write it very fast in the chat. If you have no question, then I can unshare this. Okay, since there is a silence, I guess there are no questions concerning the, the course outline, so I can unshare this and uh, let me unshare this and then we look at something else. Uh, Right, 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 right. Do me a favor and you notify your colleagues that uh, the lecture is in session. Please uh, notify your colleagues that uh, the lecture is currently ongoing. So they need to, to log in before it is uh, too late. Okay. Uh, We've already talked about the introductory part. This one I have already given in the preamble. Uh, why do we need Laplace transforms? And uh, of what uh, benefit uh, are they to us in terms of uh, applications out there? For whatever you do, there must be a justification to why you are doing it. So we have a few definitions here. Uh, if you want to understand the transformation uh, between the functions, that's why we call it a transform from one to the next. And that's why I cited an example of uh, uh, insurance mathematics. Some of your friends who are doing actuarial sciences in the statistics there. If you want to make a projections fluctuation of a dollar with respect to a shilling, and when you should you invest, when you should you invest, uh, those uh, abrupt changes which I'm referring to as the volatility, you will need uh, uh, a transformation that is quite fast in tracking those changes. Why? Because they can be sudden. And uh, since they can be sudden, it would imply 
Uh, for example, if I have something like this, uh, of course, this is time t, and these are the activities up here. So I'll call this one A, I'll generalize it in terms of activities. So for any ongoing, uh, you can see something like this. This is over time. So you wake up today, if this is uh, economic growth in terms of a dollar, and remember, once you talk of a dollar, this is uh, like world currency. Why world it is the superpower who takes over? Okay. So if you find the dollar is going up like this, and it goes down like this, every time it goes down, it means the shilling has picked value. When it goes up, it means the shilling is losing value. But this is quite slow, and you can handle it. But it can be too uh volatile then you may have something smooth and then it picks very fast and you have something like that so sometimes you guys have already done dynamical systems in that case you understand what you call a, a chaotic kind of uh, behavior in terms of uh, the, the dynamics of this graph and you also understand uh, a noisy kind of a system. So you could tell that maybe it is chaotic or there is minimal noise. And uh, then the question would be, how do you transform? Uh, let me just do this a little bit. Eraza, I remove this, okay. Uh, so the question is, uh, how would one transform How can one transform this dynamics here? The one in black. Because here things are happening extremely fast, the volatility is too much. Uh, how could you transform this uh, into this one here? So you can have a function and that function can be used to transform this behavior into this Why? Uh, here, you can make uh, predictions and projections with more certainty compared to that one way. But sometimes it may not be possible. That's why we talk of uh, uh, transformation of uh, a known function of two variables. So one can transform and you can have several transforms depending on uh, the phenomena uh, and uh, investigation or study or analysis. Right, okay. Uh, I think I'm clear right there, unless there are questions. So uh, this is simply uh, the introductory part. I told you we'll be dealing with the trigonometrical functions mostly. That is the sine and the cosine. And uh, you have the Merini transform. This one will look at some particular applications if time allows. And uh, with that, we can now start off with the definition of the Laplace transform, which is this. So we are saying if you have uh, a function uh, that is ft here, then uh, uh, by definition, we are saying uh, the Laplace transform of this, which is written as L, uh, then this is f of that function. So you must be mindful of the notation, guys. Sometimes we use a, a curry bracket. Uh, it is defined as this integral, that as uh, zero to infinity e minus st f of t dt. So once you are given this function, surely you can find the Fourier, rather you can find the Laplace transform. I insist, guys, uh, the, 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 the Zoom details, I sent you the Zoom link. I sent you, I told you it is recurrent. Uh, that is, uh, it runs out after 40 minutes. So it has warned me here. So expect it to run out in the next uh, say six minutes five, six minutes, and as soon as it, it runs out, simply very fast uh, log back in using those very details. 
That's why I'm saying it is recurrent. So if it simply cuts me out, please don't uh, take a lot of time logging back into the session. Okay, right. So uh, by definition, we are saying if you have uh, L, or rather you have uh, FT is the function, L, uh, it denotes the Laplace here. This is what we are calling the L. So L of FT, that is the Laplace of that function FT. Uh, it's given by uh, FS. By S here, we'll talk of the inverse, but why does it become FS? If you look at the definition here, we have that power there with a uh, minus ST. So this S is associated with that. And uh, when you want to find actually the inverse of this, then they will be uh, referring to that FS. So it is either this, which is equal to the integral, or you could as well, uh, given that the function here has S, the solution will be in terms of S, then the LFT can be uh, also uh, categorized as FS, which is that there. Okay. Uh, <coughs> right. Okay, so we can uh, proceed. And uh, from that, uh, that's what I've just explained here. We are saying we commonly use lowercase uh, fg to denote the original function. That is uh, this one, lower ft, gt, yt. And then the uppercase uh, to denote the image functions. For example, this, this, and this. And I've just explained this. Then for the inverse, that's the same story, the inverse of the Laplace, which is ft, that is uh, the inverse of fs. So you're moving, uh, you, you are changing now the, the image. Okay, then we have uh, existence. You remember the fundamental theorem of calculus. You talked about uniqueness and uh, existence uh, theorems. So the same applies here. We can uh, quickly go through this. So we start, uh, guys, I can see the attendance still seems to be poor. Please notify your colleagues who are probably not aware that uh, we are in session to log in. Yeah? Okay, so we are saying here existence of a Laplace transform. Uh, you are quite familiar with some of these uh, theorems. So uh, we have this equation here. When we talk of equation one, guys, I insist you should have your notes. Eh? Uh, at least you have a hard copy because I don't have to keep flipping back. Eh? Like this is the equation we are talking of. If you have uh, a, a, a copy with you, then I don't have to flip back because once I come to a definition and I refer to that equation, then you can easily see it without me necessarily uh, over flipping over the, 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 the PDF document that I'm sharing. Right. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a definition. So there is a preamble to what we want to do here and uh, we can just pick it up from here. So if we have uh, a function, uh, if we look at it in terms of a generic function, uh, gt, which is uh, an exponential uh, of order, of course, uh, by definition, we say we move from uh, zero to infinity. This is the definition. So we are defining, restricting ourselves to the definition. We are saying there will exist a constant m alpha and t such that the norm of uh, that function, this one will cater for the negative and positive is less than that for t greater than that. So we are going to combine these uh, two definitions into a theorem. And here we are saying if it is sexually continuous, why we talk about this uh, sectional uh, continuity. You remember, I simply, I had drawn a graph here and we had two scenarios. This is a heavily stochastic uh, and it can have some noise and then uh, 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 chaos. And then you may want to smoothen this over time. So you may have something like this gradual and somewhere you may even stabilize it. 
you talked of steady state solutions, I think, and the dynamical systems. So uh, this you could do partition that there. You try to understand this dynamics within this. And the function that transforms this into this may be upgraded from here to there. Is that okay? Because the properties of this here are different from the properties there. That's why we talk of sectionally continuous, but on that very domain there. Okay? Solve that exponential order. So if we can now, remember we are transforming this into this. I'm just trying to explain why we use the word sectionally continuous. Yeah? Because if this dynamics is a little bit different, you may find that the function that captures this is the same, but something may change here. You think of uh, the function like a sigmoid function. Uh, the shape parameter here will be different from the shape parameter there. So that's why it's a little bit different. Okay. Okay, so that's why we are saying that we could transform this dynamics into that dynamics. Okay, so I think this one have preempted it. And uh, in that case, we are saying that uh, if we now look at this combined with this, uh, then we can have the theorem. Uh, because of the sectional part, now you can see we are talking of uh, piecewise continuous on every interval. Uh, remember in my introductory statement or preamble to this, I told you borrow heavily from uh, integral and differential calculus. So I only hope 